universe, a boundless, infinite canvas where destiny and higher awareness intertwine. A cosmic tapestry woven with threads of purpose, guiding us toward awakening. In the silent depths of eternity, the stars whisper truths beyond comprehension, urging us to rise above the noise and see the bigger picture, beyond the illusions of the material world. As we saw in episode seven, it became painfully clear that the space community was not interested in my advisors. They actively suppressed my reach, reporting blocks, silencing my voice. Shortly after the last scrub of the SpaceX Falcon 9, Block 5 Axiom 4 mission, Indian Minister of State for Space, Dr. Jitendra Singh, posted on X, announcing a new rescheduled launch date, June 19, 2025. Upon quick review, I realized once again that this was another highly inauspicious time. I cautioned SpaceX, Axiom Space, Eyes Row, Dr. Jitendra Singh and the Indian government. No prizes for guessing what happened next, more silence. It was almost as if the la 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 can't hear you scene from Dumb and Dumber played out in real life. Unbelievable. Between that announcement and the planned launch on June 19th, I reached out to Isro and the senior leadership of the Indian government at least nine times. The office of one individual responded with a template message repeatedly. That was it. The other 10 plus leaders I contacted didn't even acknowledge my messages. Nine attempts, nothing. And yet at the same time, the White House under President Donald J. Trump responded to my messages by email and physical mail. My own countrymen, however, couldn't even bother to reply. Just imagine that. Even the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, thought it appropriate to respond. And here they dismissed my repeated efforts as if I was invisible. Strangely, the exact launch time for June 19 wasn't made public. I could smell the fear because they knew I would publish another accurate forecast if I had the precise timing. So they kept it hidden, yet through the universe's guidance, I found it anyway, using NASA spaceflight data. While most ordinary citizens might not have that capability, the universe whispered the answer to me. Given their dismissiveness, I swallowed my self-respect and sent the following respectful yet firm challenge to SpaceX, ISRO, NASA, and Axiom Space. Dear colleagues at SpaceX, ISRO, NASA, and Axiom Space, thank you for the extraordinary work you do every day to advance human spaceflight. According to the latest public statements by Honorable Dr. Jitendra Singh and available public information, the Axiom 4 mission is now targeted for June 19th, 2025 at 4.46 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. From a purely technical perspective, I recognize the immense effort that goes into selecting and validating such a launch window. From the standpoint of classical Muhurtha, however, 4.46 a.m. EDT falls within a period I consider highly inauspicious. Out of respect for both the scientific method and millennia-old astrological practice, I would like to issue a courteous, professional challenge. 1. Hold the currently published T0 of 4.46 a.m. EDT on June 19th, 2025. Conduct the countdown and launch exactly as planned, without modifications based on astrological advice. 3. After launch, make mission performance data, on-time liftoff, vehicle health, orbital insertion accuracy, etc publicly available so that interested observers can evaluate the outcome objectively. Four, if the mission proceeds nominally, the result will underscore the robustness of modern engineering and operational discipline. If significant anomalies or additional delays arise, the data will strengthen my track record to suggest that astrological timing considerations deserve a closer look. Either way, the space community and the public will benefit from an open, evidence-based comparison between science and astrology. I remain fully committed to celebrating a flawless flight and stand ready should the need arise to propose an alternative, astrologically favorable window that aligns with all mission constraints. With sincere respect for every engineer, scientist, and flight controller supporting Axiom 4, Vijay Jayotish, and of course they responded, just kidding. The silence was even louder. Truly no way to treat another human being, especially when you're only trying to help, backed by a proven track record. So I took these outcomes as the universe's will and did my duty. I published another forecast at 7.39 p.m. on June 15, 2025, 
more detailed, more precise, for the rescheduled June 19th launch. A second order Mahertha evaluation classifies the published launch instant as critically inauspicious. The envelope of potential failure modes is as follows. Not every anomaly must occur. This is the spectrum most likely to manifest in some combination. One, schedule slip, probability certain 1.0, a punctual liftoff at 0446 A MEDT on June 19th 2025 is not expected or even possible, despite best efforts. Range, vehicle, or meteorological factors, e.g. storms, heavy rain, etc., are likely to force a hold, recycle, or scrub. Two, first stage engine chill anomaly. Probability, high. During Merlin chill down, propellant temperatures are projected to trend out of family, risking an automated red line and countdown recycle. Three, in-flight over temperature flags, probability high. Thermal excursions may arise from liftoff through ascent, MECO stage separation, boost back or entry burns. In an extreme scenario, they could trigger catastrophic thermal runaway, leading to an explosion or rapid unscheduled disassembly, RUD. Crew Dragon's abort system would attempt an emergency escape, but successful separation and survivability are not guaranteed due to the violent dynamics and debris field associated with a full-scale RUD. Four, Crew Dragon cabin loop imbalance. Probability, medium high. Environmental control loops could show unexpected delta T and flow rate deviations, potentially forcing on-pad troubleshooting or an extended recycle. Five, payload thermal excursion. Probability, medium. ISRO's food technology investigation Gajar Kahalwa, Mungdal Halwa, Amras, faces a measurable risk of exceeding allowable limits, jeopardizing experiment fidelity. Sixth programmatic or in a public relations fallout. Probability high. With repeated slips already a perception issue, communications are likely to pin the next delay on a Russian segment ISS air leak, shifting external blame. Seven, crew cohesion and accountability. Probability, medium high. If the vehicle does launch on the 19th of June, after engineers scramble to remediate the above anomalies and avoid a scrub or failure, internal stress will shift to the astronauts. Morale and unity are forecast to erode, and post-flight narrative is expected to single out ISRO pilot group captain Shubhanshu Shukla for alleged issues related to pilot operations and crew cohesion harming ISRO's and PARIT's public image, even if orbit is achieved. Within the Muhertha framework, the only robust mitigation is to move the launch to a more auspicious time. Conventional engineering countermeasures cannot neutralize the underlying temporal risk vector. And what happened next? Same as always. They remain silent, and I proved right again. This time, it's even more glaring. The clown show masquerading as science continued. As I forecasted, Axiom Space confirmed the schedule slip, announcing that the launch was delayed to June 22nd, while they continued evaluating the space station's operations following recent repair work in the aft back segment of the ISS's Zvesta service module. True to my prediction, the delay was conveniently attributed to issues with the Russian section of the station. Meanwhile, ISRO also confirmed that six biology experiments, already in quarantine, had begun expiring and that they were working with Axiom Space to refresh the time-sensitive specimens. This costly setback is a stark testament to the damage caused by ignoring cosmic timing. STARS also delivered the very anomaly I warned of, rare thermal excursions during engine conditioning. Days after my warning, ULA's Atlas V carrying Amazon's Kuiper 2 satellites was scrubbed. Sensors flagged an elevated purge temperature within the booster engine eerily mirroring the spike I predicted. Different rocket, same cosmic headwind, a stunning confirmation that inauspicious timing ripples rapidly through hardware and operations. Each launch unfolds through a web of interdependent binary switches. Delay versus on time, anomaly versus nominal, reschedule versus stable, obstacle versus clear, success versus failure, and many subtler toggles engineers track in silence. Even if one compresses that complexity into just five representative switches, the chance of calling them all by random guess is barely 
Landing that result eight times in succession is a one in a trillion fluke. With Axiom 4 now following suit as the ninth, the odds sink toward one in 35 trillion, roughly 850,000 times harder than winning the California Super Lotto. To keep chanting coincidence or correlation isn't causation at numbers like these is less argument than refuge. Richard Feynman once distilled the scientific method into a single minute. First we guess, then we compute the consequences, and finally we compare those consequences with observation. If the guess disagrees with experiment, it is wrong, no matter who made it or how elegant it looks. By that standard, space agencies should be thrilled to have nine precise guesses, nine matching sets of consequences, and a clear protocol for testing the next. Instead, they avert their eyes. Publicly engaging anything labeled astrology may feel risky to institutional reputations, but refusing the comparison Feynman demanded is a far greater departure from scientific duty. My invitation remains simple. Announce your launch window, lock it in, fly, publish the telemetry, and let the world decide. If future flights defy the analysis, I'll admit failure. If they continue to conform, then the conversation about timing and engineering must begin in earnest. Science advances by guesses that survive contact with reality. My assertive outreach is not a taunt. It's a data set waiting for peer review. And so the story continues. Stay tuned for episode nine.